Audi A5 Cabriolet Review Our Rating 4 Star Audi's second generation drop top A5 is more accomplished than ever, but is it better than the coupe? 4 Quality and space, strong engine range, refined Against Not as sharp to drive as coupe, expensive if you're one of a large number of Brits who likes to make the most of what little sun we have, you'll want to check out the latest Audi A5 Cabriolet. The drop-top challenger to the Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet is well worth a look thanks to its combination of desirability and practicality. Underneath the smart, understated exterior and electric folding cloth roof, the A5 Cabriolet is largely the same as the A5 Coupe. That's no bad thing as it means you get one of the best interiors of any car at this price, loads of technology and even plenty of space for a drop top. It's not quite as versatile as the hard top, but it truly is a convertible that can be used by a small family on a daily basis. Factor in a typically strong and diverse Audi engine range, plus a chassis that's much stiffer than the one underneath the car this model replaces, and you've got a pretty complete convertible. It's still not as sharp to drive as the lighter, and stiffer still, coupe, but the slightly softer suspension and well-insulated roof makes it a really capable cruiser. Our choice. Audi A5 Cabriolet Sport 2.0 TDI 190. The Audi A5 Cabriolet is a convertible roof version of the A5 coupe. Like that car, it's based on the A4 saloon underneath, but appeals more to those who prioritize style and wind in the hair fun over practicality and running costs. Its rivals include the BMW 4 Series Convertible and Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet. Now in its second generation, the A5 Cabriolet has styling that is a familiar, and subtle, evolution over the old car but the move to an all-new platform brings several benefits. It's 40 kilograms lighter on average than the previous model, but extra strengthening means that Audi can claim it's around 40% or stiffer. That should mean better handling and a more composed ride. Audi has stuck with the tried and tested cloth roof formula rather than venturing down the folding metal roof avenue. The new roof is multi-layered with acoustic panels to reduce road noise, operates up to 31 miles per hour and opens in just 15 seconds. You also no longer have to hold the switch to open or close it a quick press will suffice. Engine options for the A5 Cabriolet include a 2.0 liter diesel with 187 bhp, our choice, a 247 bhp 2.0 liter TFC petrol and a 3.0 liter V6 diesel with 215 bhp. There's also the range topping 349 bhp S5 Cabriolet for those who want some extra pace with their roof down grace. Engines, Performance, and Drive 3.9 Star There's an engine to suit almost every need in the A5 Cabriolet, while the drive is refined and composed if not overly sporting. The Audi A5 Cabriolet is both lighter and stiffer than the model it replaces, which greatly benefits the driving experience. Most of the time you'll struggle to tell it apart from the coupe on the road, which is as good as compliments get for four-seat convertibles. We've only driven models with the optional adaptive suspension so far, but first impressions are pretty good. As standard, though, buyers can choose from the Comfort Dynamic suspension, standard on SE and Sport models, or the stiffer Sport suspension, standard on S-Line models. Every A5 comes with Audi's Drive Select function, with different modes changing the weight of the steering and the reactions of the gearbox and throttle. The cars with the adaptive option do an admirable job of blending ride quality and handling. The steering isn't full of feel but it is direct, body control is tidy enough and the A5 cab rarely loses its composure on twisty roads. Cars with larger wheels and sports suspension can thump over large potholes, but stick to a modestly specced car and the ride is pretty smooth. There's little engagement or fun to be had at the wheel, but the same is true with the A5 Cabriolet's rivals. The A5 Cabriolet has been set up to be slightly softer than the coupe to mask body shake over rough roads a common problem in convertibles that are less rigid due to the loss of the metal roof. It's worked to an extent, 
Although on rutted or broken surfaces you can still hear the telltale side window rattles and see the rear view mirror shake. On the worst roads, you can feel it through the controls, too. It's no worse than rivals, but the coupe is still the choice for keener drivers as a result. Engines Entry-level A4S can be ordered with a 148BHP 2.0-liter diesel, whereas the base A5 is a 187BHP version of the same unit. The four-cylinder diesel doesn't exactly deliver a compelling soundtrack, yet the noise is largely restricted to a background hum and once up to speed, it all but disappears. It's plenty fast enough for most people's needs, too, thanks to 400nm of torque. Bizarrely, it's not available with a six-speed manual gearbox as yet. The same can't be said for the more powerful 2.0-liter turbo petrol, we haven't driven the 187 bhp version yet. Its 247 bhp output looks healthy on paper but it actually has less torque than the diesel, and doesn't feel as urgent from lower revs as a result. It needs to be worked harder to get the best out of it, and doesn't sound all that inspiring when you do so. It's only available with an automatic gearbox and all-wheel drive, too, so isn't particularly economical. For those after extra power there are two V6 versions of the A5 Cabriolet. The familiar 3.0 liter diesel is found all over Audi's range the UK only gets the lower powered 218 bhp version and not the 268 bhp version found elsewhere in Europe. Still, it's a lovely unit smooth, refined and with loads of torque, it pulls in almost any gear and feels really luxurious as a result. There's also the hot S5 with a 3.0-liter turbocharged V6 producing 349 bhp. With all-wheel drive helping fire it off the line, it goes from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 5.1 seconds, and it sounds good, too. But its more frantic nature doesn't really suit the Cabriolet's relaxed gait, as it's more of a cruiser than the coupe. MPG, CO2 and running costs. 3.4 star. A5 Cabriolet is a little less frugal than the coupe on paper and more expensive to buy while most of the range is over the new £40,000 road tax threshold. Unsurprisingly, the extra weight of the A5 Cabriolet's folding roof means it isn't as economical on paper as the coupe. Still, it's on a PAR with its rivals and buyers can trade performance for economy or vice versa depending on engines. The most fuel-sipping model is of course the 2.0-liter diesel. In SE spec it manages 62.8 mpg on the combined cycle, by way of comparison, the Mercedes C220D Sport Cabriolet claims identical fuel economy, while the A5 Coupe manages 68.9 mpg. Business users may be persuaded away from the Cabriolet, however, as CO2 emissions rise from 113G-KM to 122G-KM. Spec the 2.0-liter up to S-line trim, however, and economy drops slightly due to the bigger wheels, while opting for Quattro all-wheel drive brings that figure down further still. The same is true of rivals, however. Though it's true that CO2 emissions are a large focus of company car drivers, and make the 2.0-liter diesel the choice for those in that situation, the 2017 VED tax changes make them less relevant for private buyers than the price. A flat road tax fee is now payable on list price, meaning that cars over £40,000 are penalized. All 2.0 TFC models, and the SE spec diesel, are under that, but everything above a 2.0 TDI Sport will cost £450 a year to tax for a five-year period, reverting to £140 a year after. The V6 diesel asks for an economy penalty for all that lovely extra torque, but it isn't too bad, claiming an impressive 57.6 mpg combined. The petrol S5 Cabriolet is considerably less economical, although a combined figure of 36.2 mpg and is an acceptable trade-off for the performance. Insurance Groups The reduced security of the roof, and extra cost to repair it in a crash, means that the A5 Cabriolet will be a bit pricier to insure than the coupe. Instead of Group 26, 
it starts from group 30 for the 2.0 TDI, rising to 33 for the 2.0 liter petrol, 39 for the V6 diesel and 42 for the S5. Depreciation We don't have residual value data for the A5 Cabriolet yet, but we know the coupe is predicted to retain between 44 and 49 percenter of its value after three years. That's pretty strong in this class of car, and even though the convertible costs a bit more to buy we expect similarly rock-solid figures when they are announced. Interior, Design, and Technology 4.1 Star Exterior look isn't exactly revolutionary, but the first-class cabin quality and tech moves the game on. Like the coupe, the second-generation A5 Cabrio isn't a radical departure from the previous car in terms of the way it looks. The overall profile is nearly identical, despite the A5 being longer than before, so it doesn't move the game on as much as some may have hoped. Still, it's a smart and stylish design, with details such as the neat adaptive LED headlights, creased bonnet, and curved shoulder line giving it a bit of extra class. S-Line models gain larger 19-inch alloys, while the S5 has a slightly lower ride height, rear diffuser, and dual exhausts. The real developments have happened inside, however. While quality was hardly iffy in the first car, it's now exceptionally well screwed together with materials that feel substantial and upmarket to the touch. It's not as elegant to look at as the cabin of a C-Class, but it is easier to use and more practical. It's crammed full of technology, too. The optional virtual cockpit display again features, while there's also an LTE module with built-in SIM to allow the system to use wireless traffic and info services without consuming all of your phone data. Wireless inductive phone charging is also standard on some models and optional on others. SAT and AV, Stereo and Infotainment Like the rest of the A4 and A5 range, the most desirable tech option is the 250 pounds virtual cockpit. It replaces the traditional instruments with a crisp and clear 12.3 inch widescreen display that can show the dials, media info and even the SAT and AV map. It works as well here as it does in any application, and almost negates the need for the stuck out screen in the dash. The slick MMI system has plenty of sub-menus to aid navigation, but once you're familiar with them it's a doddle to use thanks to the rotary controller and menu shortcuts on the center console. Amongst the sizable options list is a Bang & Olufsen sound system. It's predictably excellent, and perfect if you're the sort of person who loves blasting tunes with the roof down. But to be honest, the standard system is hardly bad, and is perfectly capable even at higher speeds with the top down. Practicality, comfort, and boot space. 4.1 star. It's not as usable as the coupe, yet the A5 Cabriolet is still one of the most spacious convertibles around. Anyone who thinks owning a convertible means sacrifices in day-to-day -day practicality would be impressed by the Audi A5 Cabriolet. Thanks to the compact size of its cloth roof mechanism and a longer body than the old car there is genuine space for four, and most of their luggage. Visibility is pretty good for a car of this type, even out the back although you'll still be heavily reliant on sensors and cameras when you reverse park thanks to the narrow, high set rear window. There's several touches to make your life easier, however, the optional wind deflector slots neatly into a compartment in the boot when not in use, while the switch to open and close the roof no longer needs to be held down for the entirety of its operation. Size The A5 is a similar width and height to the outgoing car, but it's around 50 mm longer. This primarily means more legroom for rear seat passengers and a deeper boot, but could in theory make it slightly trickier to park. It's not significantly longer than a Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet, however. Legroom, headroom, and passenger space. Buying a convertible does mean sacrificing the comfort of your rear seat passengers for the enjoyment of a folding roof that's because the roof and its mechanism has to sit somewhere once dropped. Thankfully, the A5 Cabriolet is one of the most spacious in this class. Although access is a bit limited for larger people attempting to get in the back, once there they'll find a decent amount of space for the head, knees, and shoulders.
it's perfectly fine for kids, while even smaller adults won't be too disadvantaged on longer journeys. Those in the front shouldn't have any issue, either, while the seats are hugely adjustable. Boot While the A5 Coupe offers a sizable 465 liter boot capacity, the Cabriolet sees that drop to 380 liters with the roof up and 320 liters with it down. That's hardly a big sacrifice, however, and means the A5 has the biggest boot of any four-seat convertible rival bar the larger Mercedes E-Class. You can even raise or lower the canopy that holds the folded roof electrically to test whether or not your suitcase will fit in with the roof down. Reliability and Safety 3.8 Star Euro NCAP hasn't tested the Cabriolet yet, but the coupe achieved 5 stars for safety. Reliability could be a concern, however. Thanks to its considerably stiffer chassis and raft of safety equipment, the A5 Cabriolet is likely to be a safer car than the model it replaces. Euro NCAP hasn't crash tested the convertible yet, but we know the coupe achieved a full 5 star rating with an impressive 89 percenter rating for adult occupancy. We don't know for sure yet, but it's unlikely that rating will be affected unduly by the loss of the roof. There's also rollover protection to prevent the biggest issue there. What's more, all cars get autonomous emergency braking at city speeds, a host of airbags and ISO fix child seat mountings. Adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring and lane departure warning are all on the options list. Reliability isn't quite at the level you'd expect for a premium brand, however. It's far too early to say if the new model will be problematic, but the brand finished a less than perfect 23rd place out of 31 manufacturers for reliability in 2016. Warranty All autos come with a fairly typical 3-year, 60,000-mile warranty from new. That's acceptable, but nothing to write home about if a number of mainstream manufacturers such as Hyundai, Kia, and Toyota can offer longer warranties as standard, so should premium brands. However, Audi knows that many buyers of these types of cars trade them in after two or three years and buy them on lease deals, so a longer warranty is less of a concern than it used to be. If you intend on keeping yours for longer, you can pay extra to lengthen the warranty if you so choose. Servicing The Audi A5 Cabriolet requires servicing every 12 months or 10,000 miles, whichever comes sooner. A more comprehensive checkup is required every 2 years or 20,000 miles, however. Prices vary depending on which engine you go for, but check with your local dealer as they can vary hugely depending on which one you go to.